as with the burglar, we, you know, you have a verb plus ing, so it's like, you know, sneaking toward the house. The burglar stepped lightly. Okay, so this one is verb plus ing with an object or a prepositional phrase to describe the burglar. And then you can have the past tense verb um, ruined by his lack of education, comma. The burglar crept toward the house. Okay. Um, so you can do this, and you can add those same descriptions to the end. Sneaking toward the house, the burglar stepped lightly. Uh, trying not to wake the residents, okay, or crept toward the house, drenched in perspiration, okay, verb plus ed, past tense verb to describe this, and y you can stack these, and you can put them in front, you can put them in in the back, you can put them in the middle of the sentence, just offset them by commas. Okay, let's try making some of these. All right, so just like with the other one for verb plus ing, let's try this for past tense verbs. For each of the following, consider the instructions and write a new sentence containing at least one participle phrase that uses a past tense verb. So, Peter trudged to school, that's the independent clause that you're going to add meaning to by modifying it with this transform sentence. You're going to take this sentence and adjust it so that it becomes a past tense verb participle phrase. So he trudges because he has worry about the bullies, turns into worried about the bullies, comma, Peter trudged to school. Okay, try doing this for these other sentences. Caked in mud, comma, the car looked like a swamp monster. Perfect. Good. Yep. He is described by this past tense verb and participle and prepositional phrase, excited for blank, he did something. Number three. Number four. This is grammatically correct, but this is not a participle phrase. Remember, it will start with a past tense verb. Do you want to adjust it? Um, now we're in business. Scorched by the sun, comma, the garden was brown and dead. Good. And number five. This one's harder, but you can do it. Enraged by the buzzing flies, comma, Alice grabbed the swatter and began swinging. Perfect. And you even added this prepositional phrase or preposition by correctly. Very good. And now this sentence is great. Sounds like it belongs in a novel or something. Okay, you guys now know gerund phrases, participle phrases, and participle phrases using a past tense verb rather than verb plus ing. So I want you to go through this paragraph. There are 11 uh, bolded phrases that you're identifying. And I want you to say whether it's a past tense verb participle phrase, which we'll call VP, uh, or you can just write it out if you're, if you're feeling precise, I guess. Um, you can have a gerund form participle phrase, 
or you can have a gerund phrase, so GP or G respectively. So, for the example here, striving to be the best, John practiced every single day. So you'll look at this and decide, well, is it acting like a noun, like with the, the basket picture? Striving to be the best is fun? Well, no, because striving to be the best isn't doing something in this sentence. So it's not a gerund phrase, okay. Well, is it a participle phrase describing something else? Yes, it's describing John, who practiced every single day. So then the question is, is it a gerund form participle with verb plus ing? Or is it a verb, a past tense verb form participle with, a, with verb plus ed or d? And the answer is, of course, it's a gerund. Verb plus ing. So you'll put GP or gerund form participle. All right, then go through these. They are numbered. 1 through 11, and tell me what they all are. Past tense verb participle? Gerund form participle? Or just a good old-fashioned gerund phrase? All right, everybody. Take a look at the, these two sentences here. Okay. Exhibit A. The homemade pie has tender apple slices and sweet cinnamon. It is baked until the crust is crisp with butter glaze on it. It has rich vanilla ice cream with it. It is very delicious. Okay. Uh, exhibit B. Baked to a butter glazed crisp, packed with tender apple slices and sweet cinnamon, the homemade pie is served with rich vanilla ice cream. Okay, once again, which one sounds better? This one sounds way better, right? And you've all had that experience. You went to a restaurant and you sit down and you're looking through the menu and you know that the item is it's just a cheese sandwich, right? But as you read through the description of the toasted bread and the butter and, and the, the golden crisp edges and whatever specific kind of cheese they're using, your mouth just starts watering. You can't wait to eat it. It sounds better than anything you've ever experienced. It's often participle phrases. Participle phrases are, are used frequently on restaurant menus to pack a lot of descriptive information into a short space. That is to say, Past tense verbs can also be used to make uh, participle phrases. Okay, um, for this one, I would like you to make your own uh, restaurant menu. So I have these columns here. You have a verb in column A. You have the suffix to make it past tense in column B. You have a preposition in column C and you have a noun or noun phrase in column D, and you can connect these in any order you want to create a past tense verb participle phrase and fill in the blanks. Now, I would prefer that these be delicious items, but if you want to have something gross or funny, whatever, by all means, boiled in vinegar <laughs> or whatever, use these past tense verb participle phrases to make these menu items uh, delicious to your customers, okay? Begin.